the stock markets. Like that a little special effect. That's a good way to put it. <laughs> all right. So, you know, it's still going down. It's all because of Kofefi 91. That's right. I'm going to try and outsmart YouTube. But as it stands right now, you know, also we... Also oil. Yeah, we... You know, that, that is true, too. Uh, but you know what? This, you the know, the, the system that we have, though, is it's, 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 it's a house of cards, though. And we've yeah. talked about this from our radio days, mm -hmm. from our can TV days, yep. and to the early days in the studio at your place. And then when we did everything here, we always talked about how unstable the market is and that, you know... We are due, long overdue, for a crash, unfortunately. That could either be another recession or, dare I say it, a real economic depression. It will be. And it's looking like it's going to be that way. But we saw something incredible happen, a miracle happen today. The United States, you know what? A great bastion of liberty and freedom. And anti socialists. Gave, gave 500 billion. That's right, 500 billion was a B to the, to the stock market. You, you know? pay for it. Well, you know what? Hey. Socialism for rich. The rich need that money so that they can make smart trades and be smart about everything because they know what they're doing. They're too they, big to fail. Yeah, don't worry. It's not going to happen. Oh, wait, what happened? The market fell by 10%, and it's going to still keep on falling because the system has been fake since day one. You know, I could think of an administration in 2008 that got elected, said that they were going to fix it, but never did. Oh, wait, Barack Obama and Joe, three, zero, three, three, zero, zero, three, whatever, were the ones responsible for it. They said they fixed it. They thought they fixed it. What they did was kick the can down the road. Those geniuses in the Obama administration helped create this mess. And then in turn, when Trump got elected, of course, Trump being who he is, he's going to do his tax breaks, his tax cuts, and all that other good stuff. And it's a system for disaster. And now we're hearing all this talk about how good old Joe Biden is gonna be this front runner and fix everything up. You can't fix this. What you have to do to fix a system like this is actually regulate it and hold it accountable. And also we need to deal with situations that understand that right now, understandably, we don't have a system to really address. Kofefi 91 is a real threat. And the whole entire market right now, how it's set up is nothing but a false system. So we have someone in chat telling yeah. us that it's 1.5 trillion, is that correct? 1.5 trillion. That may be cumulative. I don't have the yeah. numbers in front of me. I just, it's, it's almost like if you tell, you know, that the phrase too big to fail. Yeah. If you tell an industry that it's too big to fail, don't you incentivize them to be even riskier? Don't or, you incentivize or, or, or them to do the same mistakes all over? Yeah, again. to do the same thing again because you know you're just going to get. I mean, if everything goes wrong, the government's just going to bail you out again. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, what's his name? Dylan Radigan made uh, an excellent point on, uh, uh, on stage with Jimmy Dore a while back that one of the provisions of Glass-Steagall that people don't often talk about is that, uh, and we, we've talked about it on the show before, but they've basically removed the requirement for banks when they hit financial stumbles and they need the government to give them money. They've removed the need for financial institutions to go to the government and ask for the money. It's become automated. The government just automatically gives them the money. Because you know what would be bad is if they had to go to Congress and that would be public and, and us regular people would see regularly banks and financial institutions going and asking for money and the government giving it to them over and over and over again. So we've been covering for a while the, what, what is it, hundred, you know, tens of billions of dollars or whatever that is flowing from the government into financial institutions daily yeah. But they don't, they don't want to make that public. They don't want to let people see that. They want it to just automatically happen very quietly behind the scenes, just make sure that it keeps going, keeps flowing into the financial system. It's like, boy, maybe, the, maybe this giant Ponzi scheme you've set up is exactly that. Hey, U.S. government, can we have Medicare for all? No, we can't afford that. Hey, U.S. government, can we have student debt forgiveness? No, you can't have that. Hey, U.S. government, can we at least have a system put in place to deal with the threat of climate change? No, it's too much. Hey, U.S. government, can we make sure that, you know, we have actually a livable wage and hold these corporations accountable? No, that's going to hurt everything. That's going to ruin the markets. Stock markets. Huh, the U.S. government, we need money. The market's falling down. Don't worry, honey boo-boo. I got you, baby. I love you. I love you. I'm so sick of this corrupt system. And this corrupt system was, been, was basically propped up by those in the RNC and the DNC, the corporate establishment, corporate media. They're all friends with each other. So at the end of the day, 
you know, whether you're a diehard Democratic voter or a diehard Republican voter, whether everyone's all falling in line with Joe or everyone's rallying around Trump, just remember this. The Democratic establishment and the Republican establishment are friends with each other. I'm gonna say it again one more time for the people in back. They're friends, and with this market falling down, crashing as it is, the DNC and RNC are gonna protect their constituents. No, not you. Not the person that's gonna get hurt by this. They're gonna protect their friends in, the Wall, in Wall Street the banks, the corporations, the lobbyists. We, the working class, all of us, no matter what your political affiliation is, we're gonna be hurt and a lot of people are gonna get hurt and I don't wanna see that. Let us all step up and actually fight for a better future and actually elect these cowards out because we cannot afford to hope that a neoliberal is gonna save us or a neoconservative. We already know what they're gonna do. We don't have a seat at the table and they don't care about us.